composing gloves here, and I've thought a little bit about what I want to do with this particular sound and synth basics. Well, I've thought a lot of it. This, uh, this is on FM and RM synthesis. Now, if you come, if you haven't watched the video on modulating, for whatever reason you skipped to this video, go back and make sure you know what modulating is. So, I'm gonna encourage you to go through a VST that uses these things. I have FM8 covered. Uh, I'm not totally satisfied with the, it really requires a sound design, like sound design with this tool course, more than a crash course and a general use of the plugin. So when I cover Citrus, I plan to sort of up my game in ways that I plan to convey uh, comprehensiveness so that you can use it way more directionally. I don't feel like FM8, I've, I'm going to expand upon that one as well. Uh, but yeah, so just so you know, stuff like that is coming. But what is FM synthesis? So make sure you've watched the video on LFO in this series as well. So here we've got a signal. And this signal is oscillating at, at a rate that we've set with a ratio. Now, FM synthesizers will always use operators. Um, I, I give some reasons why I think maybe in, in some earlier videos, the one on like synthesis. But uh, the main thing you should know is that it's based on the idea that you take one frequency and its pitch is going up and down. It's sort of a concept you need to wrap your head around. And then you use another frequency to tell it how to do, how fast to do that. So if I tell frequency one with the second oscillator how to do that. So here I have another pitch. Let me turn that one on. And so together, they're the same pitch. But if I instead say, tell this one to turn its pitch on and off at some rate, it's happening so fast. This is happening so fast that you actually get sidebands. I have a whole video um, sort of exploring what is FM synthesis. I recommend checking out that video. Uh, now, RM synthesis is the same thing, only it multiplies two signals together. It's a type of amplitude modulation. It's essentially, you take, uh, well, I'm not going to explain exactly. Well, I guess I'll explain it a little. It, it gets a little weird because you break the signal down into little chunks like samples. And then you multiply these samples together and then that's your output signal. That's RM. It, it's a type of amplitude modulation. And so as one amplitude modulates, so as it turns up and down, it will tell the amplitude of the other turn up or down correspondingly. And it does that by multiplying the values. And that allows you to have both positive and negative numbers and do a number of other cool things. So that's the two things in a nutshell. I know it's not probably, you're probably coming here and expecting the great veil of FM. It's something that really requires quite a bit of undertaking. You really got to want to know what you're doing. And there's all this math involved. Now, FM actually came from phase modulation. It's essentially just phase modulation. And it was only possible once digital came along. Why do you say that? Well, FM requires a super stable time clock. And it requires, there's a number of uh, acoustical reasons why it wasn't possible before. For example, if I had, uh, so I have my left speaker over here, my right speaker over here. And I'm not sure if that's reversed for you. But if I had uh, a signal coming out at 100 hertz at, let's say, 60 decibels on uh, 60 decibels SBL. I mean, if we want to get real crazy. Coming out my left speaker and then the exact same thing, only this one's 101 hertz coming out my right speaker and they hit me, I would perceive this thing where I would get this whooshing effect. It's called beats. And to me, though that it would generate another harmonic that would not exist in either of these. And so as a result, well actually I wouldn't hear I wouldn't hear the difference. Never mind, I'm thinking of a different effect. Let's say that this is like hundred hertz and this is like four hundred hertz. I would hear the sum of the two signals, so I'd hear 700 hertz, and I'd hear the difference. So I'd also hear 100 hertz again, so I'd maybe hear 100 hertz a little, what did I say, 300, 400? So I'd hear 100 hertz, I'd hear 300, 400, and I'd hear 700. But in my original acoustic signal, they don't exist. Those don't exist there. Now, if I were to generate this same event happening inside FM, they would actually be in there for other reasons because you're you're generating it versus here. So if you were to apply a fast Fourier transform or discrete Fourier transform to these two signals, acoustically speaking, they wouldn't exist. Now I know I've kind of left the topic of FM. I don't even remember how I got on that tangent, but just so you know that that wouldn't be a thing. 
So yeah, you're gonna need another another course for this for for things like that. And it's really all there is to say about that. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, mostly, I I'm just encouraging you to go to a series more devoted to something like that because it really is the topic so big. But now you know that it's just modulating that. So one controls amplitude or so there's AM modulation. I didn't cover that. So RM. The ring modulation, amplitude modulation is, is the same thing, only it's a volume knob turning up and down onto a source. And that's that. So if you have any questions, again, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.